You have food trucks in your neighborhood? I do, we have lots of them and I like them. They provide good different foods at good prices. <laughs> Laura Peckerick drives a food truck in Chicago. Yeah. She sells cupcakes and the truck let her open a business without having to hire a staff and rent a whole building. I was able to rent a kitchen space instead of renting a whole brick and mortar and managing a, a team of people. It was just me and one baker at the time and everything kind of was under my control to kind of get my feet wet in the, in the business. Joy Venoni is a food truck entrepreneur in Baltimore. He sells pizza. Not just any pizza, delicious pizza. <laughs> When did you get the idea to open this food truck? So I was looking around for some jobs uh, and could not find anything. It's kind of a new idea. It really started taking off right around the recession, you know, 2008 time frame. A lot of restaurant entrepreneurs, the capital they had was not enough to actually go out and start a restaurant on their own. Banks weren't willing to give loans, so the food truck phenomenon really took off. Food trucks are just a way for people to enter. Dick Carpenter of the Institute for Justice studied food trucks and concluded they're an important part of the economy because they provide a first rung for people starting out. The costs are often much less for a food truck, so it's a way for them to get into business and then grow that business into something bigger. But new rules now make that tougher. Some cities restrict food truck sales to two hours. Others tell food trucks you may not park near an established restaurant. It became ever more difficult to find parking locations when we went to the city to try to sell our cupcakes. I would have customers calling me, trying to find us, and I was like, I'm trying, I, I'm trying to find a parking spot, I'll, I'll post as soon as I, as I land. Every moment that we're driving around and not parked in a location with our window open meant that we couldn't sell. Parking's limited because politicians want to protect existing restaurants. And you can't be 300 feet next to a restaurant that offers the same product. Well, there are pizzerias all over Baltimore, so that means Joey is severely restricted in where he can go. They're paying taxes. They had to use brick and mortar. Baltimore's just trying to keep things fair. Well, <laughs> it's funny you say that, John, because uh, I also invested in my business, and um, I pay taxes as well. So you can still run your business. You just have to stay away from those restaurants. There's almost no place left for me to operate. But we must protect existing restaurants, says Chicago Alderman Tom Tunney. I'm going to be prejudicial towards those kind of businesses because that keeps my neighborhood. A brick and mortar is a much more stable enterprise. This is a prime example of protectionism. Wait, who are these kids talking about protectionism? I'm Ethan. And I'm Emily. Together we're the Tuttle Twins. More on the Tuttle Twins in another video, but they rightly ask. Why would the government favor a business over another? That's a good question. Oftentimes it's because one side lobbied for regulations. Sometimes that side also donated money to a politician's campaign. Man, the government can be so shady. Yes, it can be. And by the way, Tony, the politician who's in charge of limiting food truck parking in this district, just happens to own some brick and mortar restaurants. At least he discloses that. For uh, obvious transparency reasons, I'm a restaurant uh, operator in the city of Chicago for almost 40 years. They want to keep competitors as far away as possible. The guy who opened the restaurant and had to pay real estate taxes and pay for his building. Isn't he getting ripped off by these new guys? That assumes that the food truck operator doesn't pay expenses of the same type. In fact, food, food truck operators pay taxes, they pay rents, and through their rents, they pay property taxes. Laura and Joey now are fighting the regulations in court. They argue it's unconstitutional to favor one industry at the expense of another. To try to push us back and down and prevent us from doing business is unfair. This case with Laura, five years and going. The Restaurant Association has so much influence over those who are elected officials. That gives existing restaurants the power to stop newcomers by imposing lots of rules. The nerve of them! That's getting in the way of new jobs! This is true of all bottleneckers. Yes, it is like closing a lane on the highway. Bottleneckers stop all sorts of progress. Cosmetologists take jobs from hair braiders. Optometrists ban computer eye tests. Union bus companies ban these minivans. 
Florists say, you may not do flower arrangements without a license. These bottleneckers say they're protecting us. But mostly, they collude with government to protect themselves. In this case, taking away our choices, one meal at a time.